traveling four University of Idaho students landed on the Palouse last night. We tracked his plane throughout the day yesterday as it crossed the country from Pennsylvania. 20 minutes after 28 year old Brian Koberger landed, police moved him to a sheriff's pickup truck and escorted him to the Lataw County Jail. A large crowd of Moscow residents and students even gathered to watch as he arrived. Well, good morning and thank you so much for joining us here on Up With Crim. I'm Channing Curtis. And I'm Tim Pham. Brand new this morning, we received Koberger's new booking photo and you could see it there behind us. Koberger waived his extradition hearing on Tuesday, which is why he was able to get to Moscow so quickly. Less than one hour after landing on the Palouse, authorities booked him into the Lataw County Jail. Koberger is now officially charged with four counts of murder and one count of burglary. He is being held without bond. And Koberger's arrival on the Palouse means he is expected to face a judge in Lataw County this morning. So Crime News' Nicole Hernandez is joining us live from Moscow right now. Nicole, can you tell us what can we expect from the courthouse today? So Channing Tim, Brian Koberger's name is not officially on the Lataw County Courthouse schedule for this morning, but we do know he arrived here in Moscow after the courts closed yesterday afternoon. So we are still expecting Koberger to have his first appearance in court this morning. That will be at the Lataw County Courthouse, which is right here, which is the same building as the Lataw County Jail, where Koberger is waking up this morning. Today's first appearance is the first step in his trial process. A judge will read the criminal charges against Koberger. Those charges are four counts of first degree murder and one count of felony burglary. After that hearing, we will finally learn what's inside the probable cause affidavit. That affidavit has the information and evidence troopers used to arrest Koberger in Pennsylvania. We have not had that information up to this point because Idaho law says the defendant has to make their first appearance in court before the public can see those documents. On Tuesday, the assistant district attorney in Pennsylvania says he thinks Koberger waived his extradition hearing so he could know what's in those documents as soon as possible. Having uh, read those documents and the uh, sealed affidavits of probable cause, I definitely believe that one of the main reasons the defendant chose to waive extradition and hurry his return back to Idaho was the need to know what was in those documents. So again, we are expecting Koberger to have his first appearance in court this morning. We will be at the courthouse all morning long. We'll have updates on that on both Creme 2 News at noon and Creme.com. In Moscow, Nicole Hernandez, Creme 2 News. Where are you headed? Well, we're coming from WSU. And you're going where? Oh. We're going to be going to Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. This morning, we are seeing new body camera footage from Indiana police during several traffic stops of Koberger's car during his trip from Washington to Pennsylvania. Well, yesterday we showed you video from an Indiana state trooper who stopped Koberger for following too closely. This video is a separate traffic stop that happened on the same day. In the video, you can see a deputy with the Hancock County Sheriff's Office approach the white Hyundai Elantra, similar to the one investigators had been searching for. The deputy then says Koberger and his father were pulled over for following too closely. But something to the note about this video is the date and time, December 15th, starting at 1041 a.m. Now, this new video was the first traffic stop of the day. Indiana State Police also stopped Koberger just nine minutes later at 1050 a.m., also for allegedly following too closely. These two stops happened on December 15th, eight days after the Moscow Police Department started asking the public for information about a white Hyundai Elantra. The Indiana State Police told us that at the time, the trooper had no information about a crime or a search for a car in connection with the Idaho case. With Koberger behind the wheel, you can actually hear him bring up what a SWAT standoff that happened in Pullman earlier that same morning. You heard about that incident just yesterday or? Oh, it just happened this morning. About, about an hour and a half ago, we're still wrapping it up for investigation. I was not sure the solution is if they did shoot somebody. Let's see. And then we don't know about that actually. Well, interesting. interesting. Now, it appears that Koberger was not ticketed for either traffic stop. However, if you would like to watch both of these body cam videos in their entirety, you can head over to our website right now at crim.com.
Now, of course, this case continues receiving national attention and in our commitment to bringing you more to every story, we're taking a look at the challenges of handling a case of this magnitude. Yeah, Crim 2 Shannon Mowdy spoke to a federal prosecutor and a seasoned defense attorney who actually represented Ted Bundy this morning. A look into what goes behind trying a case like this. From the beginning, the killings of four University of Idaho students has drawn the national spotlight. Now that a suspect is on his way back to Lataw County to face charges, we're digging deeper into what the legal process may look like. I sat down to learn more about trying such a highly publicized case from someone who knows about high-profile cases. Does that make it harder with all of that attention to defend someone? Oh, of course. Defense attorney John Henry Brown. You know, nobody, nobody in their right mind back in the 70s and 80s would that believe Ted Bundy might be innocent. He defended convicted serial killer Ted Bundy. And even before the age of social media speculation, Brown says defending cases with widespread attention was difficult. I think actually since the O.J. Simpson trial, there's been a presumption of guilt. I don't think people believe in the presumption of innocence anymore. In Koberger's case, some details have already come out, including the use of his DNA to identify him as the suspect. Brown says that could also make this a hard case to defend. The minute they form an opinion like, OK, the, a car that's similar to his car is seen at the scene, and OK, there is some sort of DNA evidence, the minute the public hears that DNA evidence, I think everybody's mind is closed. But protecting the rights of the accused doesn't solely fall on the defense team. Every defendant is entitled to a fair and impartial jury, and that is, you know, part of our obligation to ensure that we are doing all we can to protect the due process rights of victims as well as defendants. Vanessa Waldorf is the U.S. Attorney for Washington's Eastern District. Speaking in general about prosecuting cases, she says prosecutors get involved long before an arrest. So that involvement of the prosecution is, in, is throughout the investigation to ensure that constitutional due process is Met. Waldorf says preserving those rights for a defendant also takes time for both sides. That's why it could take years to see a case through. There is continued investigation by the prosecution and law enforcement to run down leads that might be necessary in order to move forward with a fair and just trial. And all of those matters can take you know, additional time. Krem2 also reached out to Ann Taylor, who we've learned will represent Koberger. And as of last night, Taylor is under that non-dissemination order from the Lata County judge, which prevents her from commenting on the case, so we have not heard back. Shannon Mowdy, Krem2 News. Now, this does continue to be a developing story, so we will bring you updates as we learn more. But for all of our previous coverage on this story, you can text us the word Idaho to our number 509-448-2000. We'll send you a link with all of those details right to your phone.